poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. Ah, that's me, the true underdog of this hosting situation. Hosting situation, yeah. Yes. Look, no, this, no wonder you're my special guest, hosting situation. Yeah. Huh. The one true host, man. Yeah, that's, that's what that's what that's what it's called. Yeah, it's, the hosting situation. I'm just shining light on the underdog status I've got here, which I feel like gives me a gives me a, a bit of an edge. I feel like you're bragging you a little bit about your underdog status. Well, you know, if, if it, you know, do you think I the know Titans that you from you, remember the Titans bragged about their underdog status? Let me tell you a fun fact about the game from Remember the Titans <laughs> is that the, first of all, amazing Disney movie, yeah, very really good. really good. Yes, and everyone in Roanoke. Especially Especially loves Remember the Titans because the game at the very end was played in a, a stadium called Victory Stadium and even says it on screen. Victory Stadium no longer stands. Uh, it used to, it was in Roanoke. It was in Roanoke. Uh, and we, like, when we were growing up, many a 5K, the final, like, uh, quarter mile would take place on the track inside of Victory Stadium. It was always really cool because yeah. that's, like, where... Whenever you're running one of those races, obviously you don't have spectators, you know, lining uh, the streets for 3.1 miles for the the annual Goblin Gallop. Yeah, you know, every the, the, <laughs> the Halloween themed uh, 5K that we did every year. But when you came into the stadium, there were enough people there that there was kind of that like air of like yeah. Like, you're almost there, yeah! Indeed, no. indeed. Oh, my absolute favorite part of running races ever was just that, like, finishing stretch when you're just like, it's there. Oh, absolutely. That's when the crowd is at their absolute loudest. Yes. And it's very fun. Anyway, Victory Stadium is where the final game of Remember the Titans takes place. And uh, I remember, if you watch the movie, uh, the movie would have you believe that the Titans put in their injured quarterback during the final play and through true underdoggedness, tricksy out the opponents and win in the final seconds with a who saw that coming touchdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it makes well. for good movies. It makes it's a great ending to a movie. You're like, oh yeah, get him, go, home. that's amazing. But I remember learning in high school that uh, my government teacher was present at the game. No way. Yes, I guess he would have been your government teacher as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Akaral. Akaral. Yeah, that's a joke from the class. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one got it. <laughs> no one got it. Seven, seven people listening are like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Anyway, he was present at the game, and uh, he we were. It, it came up in class one day, and he informed us that despite what you see in the movie, the fact that T.C. Williams was going to win, what won the game, was like a foregone conclusion. They before were like, it started like they were monsters compared to the opponents. They were like giants. You know, it was there. You know, football is a big man's sport, and they were they were big boys, and they were just they just rolled over their yeah, opponents. I, I think that they yeah, yeah. They, they basically yeah slaughtered them. It was not yeah. It was not the the way that it was portrayed where you had the. You know, like the island for misfit toys who all came together and there was yeah. that special chemistry on the field. Right. And they conquered diversity and their opponents. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Was, they just conquered their opponents. Well, I'm sure I'm sure in real life there were some diversity issues happening at oh, certainly. T.C. Yes. Williams, yes. for sure. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's, of course, what makes it such a big story. Yeah, but that's no, the bigger story. It, it is interesting because you, they are played in the movie as sort of like this underdog team that's, that's coming together. It's interesting, though, because it, it reminds me of The Miracle on Ice, which is, of course, the, the hockey story. <laughs> the other best Disney sports movie. Yes, the other best Disney sports movie. College hockey. Um, which is, I love this movie so much. I feel like you and I quote it, like, unexpectedly a lot. Um, it's so good. It's so good. But it's it's such a rare circumstance where they're able to really make the United States of America the underdog in a story which I think is kind of maybe at the, the Olympics at the Olympics yeah which I think is a, a feat in and of itself it's like yeah yeah no we were we were we were the ragtag team of that's right college, college students no professionals here yeah yeah sorry that was actually I remember the Titans no, it was Forrest no, Gump. That was Forrest Gump. Yeah, it was man. like the, was like the kid Gump. on the bus. It's like, kid can't, on the bus, sit, can't here. sit here. <laughs> nope, sorry. I was thinking of uh, little little Hayden Pantier there narrating the beginning. Right, who actually, I think, she, she was, of course, Hayden Pantier, because now we're completely jumping between 
three different movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, we threw Forrest Gump in there just for good measure. Right, right, right. Yes. He does play college football. So there he you does, go. There we yeah, go. College hockey, high school football, Forrest Gump, college football. We did it. Bam. Mm, Basically, yeah. it, it is confirmed that Forrest Gump is the average of <laughs> the movie Miracle on Ice and Remember the Titans. Yeah. Does, no one saw that math coming, but they got to the bottom of the equation. We're like, well, I'll be. <laughs> well, I'll be. I'm pretty sure, though, that there's also a story. And if our cousin Rachel listens to this, she can confirm it or deny it. But I'm pretty sure that Hayden Panettiere was in our Aunt Tina's art class. I believe that at, is a, a, as a, a family legend. Yeah. 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 How cool. How cool. What? Amazing. Oh, man. This is this is always one of those. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite trends on TikTok is who is like the most famous person who went to your high school and like people like open up their yearbooks. Oh, and who's the most notable person <laughs> you mean? <laughs> the most notable who definitely should be on the who, Wikipedia who, page. Who are the people who should be on their high school's Wikipedia page? Should be. Should, should be. be. Yeah. I think the Super Carlin work, in pro- work in progress, guys. We'll get there. We'll day. get there eventually. Yeah. But I always think it's so fascinating because like, of course, the thing that is like, of course, people who are famous went to high school at some point in yeah. time. Like, it's really not that unusual and it doesn't really change anything because you don't know this person or their high school. And so all it really confirms is like, yes, Brad Pitt did in fact go to high school or whatever. Maybe he didn't. That would be so funny if like Brad Pitt randomly didn't. Yeah. (laughs) It's only really relevant if you were like in their graduating class or something. Sure. That I think that that helps, but it's always interesting to me to see that high school photo of them because it's so different from all of the photos that have now existed out in the ether. Thanks to their, their famedom. Right. As it were. Exactly. Yeah. Who is the, we, we've probably talked about this before. Who's the most famous person went to our high school other than us, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably Ronda and Tiki Barber. Okay. Yeah. That's, a, that's, yeah. that's gotta be it. Yeah. yeah. The NFL players for Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New York Giants. Yeah. They were also, I think, pretty big uh, college standout stars at UVA who got totally destroyed this weekend at the hands of the Virginia Tech Hokies. What? Go Hokies. Um, sorry, I just wanted to work that in there. Just just sneak it in. Just, just sneak le- it in le- there. A little, like, left jab. Just a little, like, whoops. <laughs> Sucks to suck. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> I think we had a worse season record than they did when uh, all was said and done. Look, Ben, Ben, this has been a marvelous... This The thing about college football and... The hoax is that historically, almost since like 1999, basically, uh, for there was this very long stretch where the Hokies had like the longest consecutive streak of 10 win seasons. So like growing up as a Virginia Tech fan was amazing because you were just always winning. Always winning. Except they always had this terrible reputation as the uh, Hokie Chokies because they would always have these amazing win seasons and they get to this big bowl game and then lose. And, and then lose. Like, or they uh, would lose to like a totally like unranked team. Right. The overconfidence or... issue in Blacksburg is a real problem. It is a forever it problem. Is, it is, it is forever always problem. an issue. You know what? Coming back to the underdog dog overdog situation the Hokies play amazing as underdogs yes. and terrible as overdogs exactly like it's it's like a tale as old as every year and <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so anyway the the UVA Virginia Tech rivalry if you can even call it that <laughs> um hey, it's full of burns today <laughs> uh, <laughs> only because they won <laughs> right 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 yeah but uh it just I, I say that though because I think um in the last uh s- 17 matchups between Tech and UVA. Tech has won 16 of them. And they lost last point. year. And they lost last year. So right. in the last two matchups, they've won one of them. But, right, okay. uh, you know, you got to go way back more than that. Exactly. Yeah. Way, yeah. way yeah. further back than that. Right. Um, but it, it, it has been a foregone conclusion for over a decade that Tech would just wallop the Cavaliers yeah. every year. And they typically do, and it's always so fun to watch. But last year was finally the year where they broke the streak. And it was just like, you had, and then coming into this year, Tech was having a very bad season, probably their worst in living memory. Definitely their worst in living memory. And UVA having a a pretty average, pretty regular normal season for themselves. But you would have thought going in that they were the more competitive team. And yet, (laughs) oh, did they get destroyed. It was fantastic to watch and I had a blast doing it. Uh, Also, let me just say, I had a great football weekend. It's so rare for me, like, because the, the three teams I'm typically rooting for 
uh, historically were the New England Patriots, the Washington football team, and the Hokies. And for all three of them to win on the same weekend, a, a real rarity. Yes, it was. Largely in part unheard of. to the Washington football team because they're not very good. Yeah, but they consistently. Been, they too have been having a wonderful run all of a sudden despite a really bad start as usual. Uh, they came back. They, they've, they've run four in a row now. Whoa! Unbelievable. Including knocking off the undefeated Steelers last weekend and... This weekend, they defeated the 49ers. It was fantastic. Alex Smith, starting quarterback for the Washington football team right now, was drafted number one by the 49ers way back in the day. So it was oh, great man. to see him come it's back. It's a cruel irony. Yeah. That like said, my dependence on you. <laughs> Name that movie. Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. Um, that. that said, Washington won without a single offensive touchdown. So there's that. But... I'll take it either way. I'll take it either way. Anyway, we can stop talking football talk if you want. We, I can keep going. <laughs> I mean, we, can, was, we, could, we could talk about how I'm having a weird year with football altogether because like, football historically has been something that I would rank like in the top, I don't even know, probably top five favorite things for me to like both play and watch. Yeah. Like... I, I even though you never played on a competitive team, even though I never played on a competitive team, it was still like if the if we had like a day of gym class in high school and it was like, yeah, like here's a here's a nylon mesh bag full of a variety of different, you know, soccer, football, yeah. volleyball, frisbees, like whatever. I would always be like, all right, let's play some football. Right. And it, it has forever like remained. I think one of like my biggest high school regrets is that I did not play high school football. But then you wouldn't have run cross country, Ben. I know it is literally like it's the problem that I struggle with. It's a lose, like, lose. There's no two ways about it that running cross country was like some of the most defining like moments of my life yeah. you know like it was it's so integral we talk about it constantly yeah like i think it crafted a lot of uh perseverance into like my persona my like who i am yeah uh in terms of just being able to like continue to go keep whatever but for i but i swear i mean this was like we you know you, you always had like that history teacher who was also the football coach and <laughs> yeah yeah you, i like, had that guy yeah yeah and the the it was always those teachers that we had that like would be like walking through the gym and like see me like catch a football or something and be like, man, you should really come out. And it was always like, it filled my balloon like to bursting point. <gasps> like the fact that literally like one of the coaches was like, man, maybe you should play. And it was like, really? 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 Um, and I never did. And I've always regretted it. Mm. But anyway, football has been really like, even then, like as we got older, like I again, you know, it was like I really, really, really desperately wanted to go to Virginia Tech uh, for my college. And it was I feel like in a huge part, what I kept envisioning as part of my college experience was getting to go and like be in the student section and like actually be a part of like Virginia Tech football from like maybe the people who get to feel it the most in the moment. It's pretty magical. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. And I didn't get in. <laughs> So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get to have that experience, but still like even, even once we got older, uh, we have like bought season tickets to Virginia tech football games, and, like made a big deal out of tailgating. Mm -hmm. And it's like my, just, I like, so look forward to it. I love being there. I love the stadium. I love the fact that like Blacksburg has this reputation for being like one of the loudest like stadiums to play in. Yes. So like if you're an away team in Blacksburg, it's like, that is your added distinct disadvantage just simply because of the noise you're going to have to deal with. Yes. I think that is awesome. Yeah. And the Hokies come out to enter Sandman, which is just like, like if there is not it's, something that can pump you up more than going to a Virginia tech football game and jumping while enter Sandman is blasting through the yeah. stadium. It's like, it's yeah. the best. Even if you're not like a college football fan, if you are in Blacksburg during football season and you can go to a game, you should just for the like, experience yes because it is it i don't think you even need to enjoy football to enjoy being there exactly <laughs> yeah exactly so um all, all of that to say though that this year i have like been completely and utterly disenchanted with like football altogether and and i have no idea like what it is about it that's like really like struck me in such a strange way but hmm. like there have been moments where i've been at home by myself like working around the house and i've been aware of the fact that tech was playing and didn't even turn the game on oh geez ben. coming from someone who like two years ago went to 
every home every game. game. <laughs> right. Yeah, in person, like, in person, um, grilled wings and everything, you yeah. know. And so I, I but I, I couldn't tell you, and I, I don't know if it's like because it's been such a weird year, like because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, I don't know if like maybe there's something where there's no one in the stands, and it feels like I don't know, like or like there's so many players out with COVID that is it even really like a real season or well I, I feel like if you were to really get deep into like the idea of pulling for your team like it, it's almost like the like that question like what's the point of life it's almost like what's the point of sports you know like community I know I know yeah. exactly that's what I mean <laughs> but like in part of that community is like we won you lost <laughs> like no, this no this is that's I was thinking about this exact phenomenon over the weekend and like like it's so often you know sports is like an opportunity to to say like we won you lost without it being like mean you true, know it's like true. it's like justifiable like competitiveness and it's like your dedication to whatever you know team you support you know that's you know you you're part of that fan base and you know Obviously, you're not on the field doing anything. You're just tuning in and watching and deciding who you're going to cheer for. Right. Which but. even that, though, like that's that's like one of the things about it. Like there's so, so, so much pride in like the team that you pledged your allegiance to. Yeah. So like once upon a time. Right. Because that's the thing. It's like especially like I experienced it a lot this past weekend because it like for the you know, for so long, uh, you you know, tech has been sitting at the top of the tech UVA rivalry. Yeah. And it's just been like fantastic. But like for a whole year, every time I drew, pulled up behind a car and had to see that like a UVA sticker, it was just like, oh man. Like it was like genuinely disappointing. But I was driving around yesterday and I would see the stickers and I'm like, oh, we're back. <laughs> we're back. Yeah, it was we're like, back. Oh, all the bragging rights are back. It's fantastic. Oh my god, it's so funny. <laughs> it's a good feeling. But that's that's the thing, yeah. So like like you said, like you're not on the field, which I think is like a very common like sentiment for people who are not into sports. They're like, uh, they'll they'll say like, well, you're not out there on the field. Like, why do you say we? Like, we won. You didn't win. They won. No, um, no, I don't. I disapprove of that line yeah, of thinking yeah. all together sure sure no like you, we we want like especially like college you go to that school you're you know paying to be there and you might be in the stands you might have paid money to go so yeah I, I don't know especially if you've been supporting a team for like a very long time and it's like it's probably like part of your almost weekly you know ritual yeah for like of, a part of the year of course you know no i i just think it's it's interesting because it's like it's Sometimes it's almost like a, like a structured opportunity where it's okay at the core of it to be in opposition of one another. I think that's what's fun about it. We're like, you can get like, it, it feels like it's like, an, it's like, you're just, this is just the game. Right. You know, it's like so often you get on Twitter and people are like genuinely, genuinely yelling at each other, like over actually important things. But then you get on it's like sports. It's like, you can be as like, you know, as long as you're not like violent or like, Oh, you know, sure. Yeah, particularly, yeah. Uh, you know, insanely aggressive about it. As long as, you know, you, you, you can like trash talk and smack talk. And it's like everyone agrees. It's totally OK. Sure. sure it's totally sure. OK. If you're winning. Great. And it's like this is what drives so much conversation. No matter because no matter how much you smack talk, the other team will always have like their own little like, oh, but what about there was always this one time. Of or, course. Except except maybe this would have gone our way. And it's like yeah, oh, every, it's just so much fun to argue about. It <laughs> is. Know. It is. Yeah, my mind immediately went to my 18th birthday where we had tickets to the Virginia Tech Boston College football game oh. in the rain. Oh, I remember Thursday it. night. I remember it. Oh. ESPN. ESPN was there. Boston College, number two in the country. Yeah. Matt Ryan, current Matt Ryan. head quarter or head quarterback, uh, starting quarterback for the Atlanta <laughs> Falcons. You know he had been having this unbelievable run, mm -hmm. doing Boston incredible. College. Tex got him up fourth quarter, and then like last two minutes, it just all falls apart. It just all fell apart. <laughs> I mean, it was thirteen to nothing with two minutes left, and it was like, oh my gosh, we are about to upset Boston College in a shutout in the rain on Thursday night and we're here. And we're here. And, and it was it's like, my 18th birthday. And it was yeah. like every and then and then out of nowhere they scored two touchdowns and won the game. But but see <laughs> is it that I'm gonna do it right now. But what was so great is that tech like the atmosphere around campus the, the following week, every, like Friday morning, people still like class and people showed up. It was just like so morose, but like the whole, like you could tell, like it was palpable, the tension in the air, knowing that 
it was very likely Tech would face off against Boston College again later that season right. uh, for the ACC championship, which they won. And it, I know, people like had shirts that were like, that like started, because uh, it was like whenever, whenever they scored the first touchdown, it was like two minutes and 43 seconds. So people had like shirts made up with like, you know, two minutes and 43 on the like, we're, we're coming for you kind of stuff. Oh, it was really fun. That's awesome. But that is yeah. amazing. Yep. See, that's <laughs> anyway. the thing. That's the thing, though. And it's like you have these like little moments that get to like stand out in you. And I, I think basically my my big concern with it is I'm like, I hope that this has just been a fluke year for me. And it's not that like the magic has somehow been lost. No, like I've become too cynical towards the game Mm -mm. to care no you know and like someday some kid i'm gonna be sitting on my porch and some kid's gonna walk by and be like hey do you know what the score is and i'll be like i don't even watch the games anymore and he'll come up with like his old beaten up tattered hand-me-down football and be like listen sir we should talk about this and then he treat he inspires me to fall in love with the game all over again Uh, and then me and him become best buds mm. it's gonna be great yeah i don't know if that's what i would aspire to i think i'd aspire to just already be able to answer that kid's question oh all right well yeah i have my story too but you know whatever it's okay it's okay yeah yeah Yeah. okay you look like you're pulling something up (laughs) no i was just i I was just gonna take a hard left turn into the today's corny joke oh well let's hear it all right you ready you ready i'm ready jay how can santa deliver presents during a thunderstorm how can santa deliver presents during a thunderstorm I feel like maybe something to do with like clapping or something like a thunder. Cla- I don't know how. The, the interesting, interesting guess. Interesting guess. Okay. Normally you're more spot on. Yeah. That's okay though. That's I'm okay. Sorry. I mean, all pros have their off days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> His sleigh is flown by reindeer. Oh my gosh, that's so obvious. <laughs> wow. Wow, I'm kicking myself. Pretty darn good. Pretty, Pretty good. darn Not bad. good. Not bad. I like it. I like mm-hmm. it. Man, so actually, uh, I, I thought that was fun, though, because this this year in particular, while I have not been particularly into football, one thing I have been very <laughs> into is Christmas. Oh. Uh, and just the holidays in general, getting into the, the full swing of things, yes. so to speak. So I've got my house fully decorated. I went, I went full bore, you know? Yeah. Like I did the, I I rented the ladder after all. I don't know if I ever followed up on this, which was straight up terrifying, by the way. To be on the top of a 30 foot ladder. (laughs) To be on the top of a 30 foot ladder. Yes. I don't know if you remember from the television show Community, there's like a joke class called Ladders. (laughs) Do you remember yes, that? Yes, I do. Now that you mentioned it, okay, I would take that class. You would, t- yeah. I would take ladders, yeah, because yes, okay. So my my I, for years, this has been like a so long in the making. I've wanted to like super decorate my house. I've wanted to go like full Griswold on it, and I've been like actually like acquiring Christmas lights for some period of time. The clips to attach them to all like the gutters and the shingles, like just all all the stuff necessary. I'm I'm pretty pot committed at this point in time. Yeah, sounds like um, it. The, the big concern was forever, and I and I thought that I had solved it. I bought a 22-foot ladder, and I was like, okay, that'll be good. Pretty that'll good. be enough. That's a yeah. big ladder. And I went and set it up. Not big enough at all. So I had to rent one one day, which meant that like I had to like, you know, go to look a place, load it onto my truck, and then, yeah. you know, like... How have, do you transport a 30-foot ladder? It's so difficult. Yeah. It's so difficult, but I got it there. And as I'm, like, climbing up this gigantic thing, it's like wibble wobbling and my my friend mike is down at the bottom like holding it and he's like you're good and i'm like am i good yeah. like, <laughs> like, honestly i don't really if that if this turn i don't trust you to be able to stop right. this from flipping right 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 yeah, yeah. i mean because the, the ladder itself probably weighed like i don't know 130 pounds or something like that right, it's a like, very heavy ladder yeah you know you one person cannot provide enough torque to stop it from it, rolling exactly it's yeah. like holding like a long stick out like like if you were to stick your arm out and then hold a long stick by like one end it's like it doesn't even matter if it's a heavy stick it might be hard to hold straight right and this thing is a 30 foot ladder with a person on it with a person yeah n- namely me <laughs> <laughs> were you were you like strapped to any did you have like a carabiner clip or anything attached to anything i i maybe should have yeah were I, you just free climbing it up i was there? i was free climbing okay. it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And they, they could have made like a netflix documentary about the <laughs> the first time someone scaled the a 30 foot ladder by themselves 
Uh, no, so the, it was so funny though, because like I, there were all these different situations. My across the street neighbors literally came out and were just sitting on their porch watching. <laughs> just like, yeah, <laughs> hey, look what this guy's doing. Crack, <laughs> get me a beer. Uh, they may have literally had beers. Yeah. I kid you not. I kid you not. Uh, but anyway, I got everything all set up. I was so proud of it. And then Alice is really fond of the skeletons that we have. We had them in our front yard for Halloween. They were like sitting on our swings uh, that we have out in the front yard. And yeah. so they were just sort of like waving at people as they went by. Right. And so Alice was like determined for the skeletons to then be relevant to the Christmas decorations, which I had like, I had gone like for the classic, you know, gingerbread look. Right. You know, like I wanted it to look like all, all quaint and special and adorable. Right. And Alice wanted it to be funny. And I remember there was this like moment where we were, uh, we were talking to her dad one day and Alice was telling him about how she really wanted to go full skeleton on this thing. And I'm like expecting 100% sure that he's going to have my back on this one. And he's like, Oh, I love it. It's the juxtaposition of, it. it makes it so funny. And I was like, no, I can't believe you just said juxtaposition. I cannot believe I cannot you believe just leave it. And I was, I was like, really? Ah, now I have to do it. So I went out there and I, I like, you know, I had all my extra lights that I had, you know, I had stored away that I was going to use for other things, but Mm -hmm. whatever, no big. No, I'm just kidding. By the time I actually got into it, I was pretty into it. So I like ran it around my a tree in my front yard right. all the way up to a branch which has my climbing rope on it i ran it down the climbing rope where the skeleton is then hung upside down and like by his ankle right <clears throat> and he's wearing a santa hat and yeah. then he's like holding so it looks like he fell decorating your tree that's exactly yeah. correct yeah that's very good yeah thanks thanks yeah. i got so many people stopped literally like while i'm like up in the tree also not clipped in being like what are you doing that like, just tons of people like stop their car and like that to like make a comment, say something. You Had know. to say something. Had to say something. What's this guy doing with the skeleton? I know. On I know. Christmas. On Christmas. Wow. Yep. But so now I'm thinking that, that, that like now that we've done it two holidays in a row, I'm like, maybe I'm just going to go. Maybe that's what I'll commit to. I'll go full bore skeleton and just for ev- like the skeleton will never get put away. Yeah. Every holiday of the year, it'll just be like, how do you make him look like Uncle Sam? For What's going to happen? Like it's going to come full circle and you're going to get the Halloween and this will be the one holiday where all of a sudden you obviously you lose the juxtaposition now. And so the only one we like, don't the use the skeleton for is skeleton. Halloween. Right. I like exactly. it. I like it. Mm-hmm. And then and then like if her dad says anything to me about it, I'd be like, well, it's the juxtaposition, you know? Like, yeah. Right, you know, way, that's that's what, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I like, just put, I hung a bunch of candy canes in the tree for Halloween because people are like, what? I, I dressed up like Santa Claus for Halloween. Get it? It's a yeah, juxtaposition. It's a juxtaposition. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hilarious joke. It's hilarious. I like how uh, I think I, I will say it sounds like Alice pulled a, a very sneaky maneuver on you to like uh, to do to get the skeletons in there. No, it was, it ended up being, I mean, I mean, I, I was, I was not for it because I had like such a specific vision in my head, mm-hmm. but then like once I had decided that I was going to do it, I actually did surprise her by doing it. So she went to work one day and mm-hmm. I spent like the whole day while she was at work. Had she brought it up with you before bringing it up with your dad or with her dad? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I, I knew that she had wanted to do it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wasn't just thrown under the bus going 50 miles an hour. Right. Like all of a sudden. Now you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So it's all good. It's that would have been good. a little sneakier, like if she's like trying to get this to happen, and then like mm, n- knows you have a certain vision, so she brings it up with other people, right? And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, what a great idea! Now you're like, what? What? No. Ugh. Who'd have thought? Mm. You haven't even seen it the other way though. No. <laughs> Jeez. Come on. Anyway, so that's um, fun. We'll have to check in every holiday to see what your skeletons are doing. Exactly. Exactly. We'll we'll continue to work on that. Uh, but yeah. So anyway, other than other than that though, with the holidays, I've been I've been doing some light baking. Sure. Uh, you know, of course, making working my my macarons. Mm-hmm. Uh, also. I've uh, been watching just tons of Christmas movies. And last year on the pop, you may recall that I had found like my new favorite Christmas movie ever, which Klaus. is Klaus, uh, which should have won the Academy Award. I'm, I'm still not over it. Like I, I was it was so funny because we've been such Pixar people for so long that I was like hardcore. You know, like it's always been like, like yay, Pixar won, like, you know, whatever. But like this past year, for whatever reason, I had this like very deep connection to Klaus. Yeah. And they were nominated. And I think Toy Story 4 ended up winning. Is that okay. right? I, I don't even know. OK, I think Toy Story 4 ended up winning, which I thought was a total sham. I was like, no, 
I'm not into it. Was Klaus nominated? Klaus was nominated. Okay. Yeah, it just didn't win. It just wow. didn't win. So anyway, this year, though, there there was a new Christmas movie that we've been watching basically a new Christmas movie almost every single night. So I've, I've watched a lot of the like Hallmark specials and yeah. just all the you know, Christmas I, prints and have stuff. You know, yeah, Christmas prints is exactly the example I was going to bring up how Netflix has got their own. It's like Hallmark movies are this weird genre of things to me where it's like everyone, like they're not very like good. highly produced. Yeah. They're not yeah. very good. <laughs> I was but like, he, is that the word on the tip of your tongue? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to say that, but what I mean is like you can, it often feels like when you're watching it, like, okay, this didn't have like a huge budget necessarily. Like sure. They, like it's a Hallmark movie because it, it was made for TV, not like for theatrical release or whatever. But what I think, but like they've done that so long and it's become like, so like, ingrained into like a style of movie that I think it's interesting that now you've got like Netflix, which produces insanely high quality stuff, but is now also like actively creating like movies movies to that are specifically like, like the Christmas Prince, I would say is a great example. It's like the point of this, the way you have done this movie is specifically to emulate the Hallmark movie style. But like, even though that's not like a, what I would say is a great style, but maybe it is part of the maybe style. It, maybe it, it is. It's like it's like no no more than a twenty million dollar budget to make these movies, and like that's that's like part of the charm there of are, the movie. Did you know there are four Christmas Prince movies? I did not know. And actually, I think I said the Christmas Prince is one of the examples, and I think that may have been one of the movies we haven't actually watched yet. No. Oh. What is the one that has? Um, she was in High School Musical. Do you know what I'm talking about? She like, there's like, she meets like an identical uh, version of herself. Oh, oh, who um, is like Vanessa a, Hudgens. That's the one. Right. That's yes. the one. We watched, we watched both of those. Okay. I don't know if there's a third one. There Let me tell you, one. The Christmas Prince stars an ex Power Ranger, which is pretty great. Oh, just FYI. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Now, now I see why yeah. you're into it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. I've okay. only seen the first one. But. Okay. But you're going to watch the second one tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. We've been... Uh, we have been doing a similar thing where we're trying to watch a bunch of different Christmas movies, but we haven't gone every single night. Okay. Um, but I don't, I don't know if those are really on my list of ones to be knocking out. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you're looking for one to knock out, yeah. part of the reason I brought this up is because <laughs> this year I watched a, a new Christmas movie that I was like, what? Like, I, I mean, it is so... I don't even know. What, yeah. What are you trying to convey? Good? Bad? Weird? All... Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's called, I think it's called Fat Man. Okay. Um, and it's got Mel Gibson as Santa Claus, who actually, I have to tell you, was not a bad Santa Claus. I thought he played it well, just, just for what it's worth, if you wanted my take on that. But the idea behind it is basically that Santa is dealing with budget problems and has to effectively sell his soul to the devil to work with the... Uh, like U.S. military to make like something for the military, like and like so he instead Santa's of, making stuff for the military. Yes, okay. Yes, he's like a government contractor because like the uh like the the workshops and the elves and stuff are so like highly effective. Yeah, and they need it like by a very strict deadline. So like they approach Santa and Santa needs the money, so he does it. Santa oh. needs the money. The the subsidization dollars were down. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> this, is, this is always such a gimmick in like every Christmas movie that involves Santa. Where like Santa, like you gotta save Christmas. Because, like all you gotta do is introduce money into the equation. It's like, oh, that's that's how you make it a problem. Because like, but Santa doesn't need money. Of course he doesn't. No, Santa has magic. Come on. But I think it's always mind blowing to me is like when they when there are Santa moments where they describe it almost as if like Santa could make like a PlayStation and it's like, well, how would Sony feel about that? If Santa's just up there cranking out PlayStations, it's like, that's gotta be some type of patent problem. Oh, I know there's that's uh, in the, I think is it the Anna Kendrick Christmas movie Noel? Yes. Yeah. The, iPads. Like, the joke is that like all the kids just want iPads. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or even in elf, I think they're, Making just, you know, extra sketches and stuff. Right. Like, Susie talks a lot. Yeah. Like, okay, you're making name brand toys. Yeah. And giving them out. I don't know if, hmm, like, I see what you're going for. And it would, you know, obviously kids ask Santa for specific toys and he has to deliver. Right. And the elves make the toys. So if they ask for name brand toys, I guess that's how it would have to work. But it also seems like 
Yeah, that's where it gets messy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Right. And so I think one of the things that I like about the the movie Fat Man. So for the other end of the movie is that a like cantankerous eleven year old hires a trained assassin to effectively hunt down Santa Claus. Oh, that's that's the other thing that's happening. Okay. Um, and th- that's like the other the other major plot point of it. Uh, and the the assassin has had like a lifelong like frustration with Santa Claus because he was like a he was like a bad kid. He was on, he was the, on naughty the naughty list. list. Yeah. yeah. So he wasn't getting stuff. Right. But so he collects, and this was one of the things that I thought that they did that is so different from so many other Christmas movies. But he's like a he's a collector of things that were made in Santa's workshop as they, as if they were like collectibles. Oh, and so like everything that was made in Santa's workshop has like a little placard on it. That's been like stamped. that says like made in Santa's workshop. Seems like there'd be tons of these things though. There, there of course would be, but I think that they could be so specific. And I think frequently they would be the type of things you would never get rid of because Mm. like it would be so hard to part with it. So you see like one guy like fencing his uh, like baseball bat that he got when he was like eight. Okay. You know, and it's like clearly something that like has had long time sentimental value to him, but he needs money to pay for his kids something. Right. Okay. So he like is willing to like sell it. Okay. But it, it sounds like people wouldn't be willing to like part with them very easily. But that was one thing about this particular movie that I thought was good. Uh, the other thing I probably need to say about this movie is it is rated R and it is reasonably graphic. Okay. Uh, in terms of like gore maybe which is you know kind another of weird thing problem. for christmas yeah okay but so my thing about it though is that the i was i was like compelled to keep watching okay the whole time because i was like where is this going like what is this movie and it doesn't have particularly good reviews but i just want to talk to people about it okay. because like, this is what did i see it's like what did who, i experience who who runs with this idea yeah and it's like I, what I really think it comes down to is I think that it's almost like the Harry Potter movies where it's like there are certain things that they nailed, you yeah. know, like like McGonagall. Perfect. Yeah. You know, like she like I can't imagine anybody other than Maggie Smith being McGonagall. Right. Like so such good casting, such good execution mm. across the board. Yeah. And I think that this movie's like that where there, there's like details that I just I am in love with. It's yeah. like that was so good. That was like so satisfying or cool or like filled me with joy to think about this like perfectly turned baseball bat you know in santa's workshop and like yeah. it's like it's like so solid almost even feeling there's like that like you can like see them like you know uh take it and sort of like drop the head of the bat like into their hand and it's like you can like feel the quality right it's like, what is that walnut like i don't even, i don't know it, it just feels like good wood um <laughs> so i don't know and and there's lots of cookies there's lots of cookies it's like a there's like, like, like a motif of the movie i don't know if it's a motif maybe Shoot possibly okay. but it seems like cookies keep uh <clears throat> popping up um i don't know so i want people this, this is basically my call to action okay hashtag not sponsored yeah it's for people including you to watch fat man uh so that we can talk about it because i need i need to talk to someone about it did, someone did anyone about else watch it can you tell me what you thought uh you can send all your emails to popcornculturepod at gmail.com or just find us over on reddit mm. uh, where we have a, a happening little little group of thinkers out there your your story reminds me of my first experience with a movie called the rocky horror picture show which i'm not sure if i've talked about this on the pot before i don't think so i don't think i've ever heard you talk about it at all the rocky horror picture show are you familiar with the the movie at all okay i'm i'm remarkably unversed (laughs) then you would be in the exact position i was in okay walking into (laughs) The Rocky Horror Picture Show, which to people in the know, they already, I'm sure they know where this story is going. But um, the Rocky Horror Picture Show is maybe like the most definitive movie in terms of like what you would call a cult classic. Like it might have like started the the term cult classic. So people who know about it, like know. Okay. And they are in and they love it. Okay. And it it comes up a lot around Halloween in particular. And there's like a whole tradition around the movie where not only will it be playing on screen but it will also the people people will be acting out the movie in front of the screen as it's happening behind them additionally you will often you will go you will like buy tickets to go to a a viewing party of it so you can watch the performance of the people as you watch the movie and you'll be given like a packet of what feels like random stuff, including like a newspaper, toast, other things. And at certain points of the movie, 
people who already know what to do will know exactly what to do with these props and like something will happen and everyone will pull up the newspaper at the same time. So it's like a big like group viewing experience. Interesting. Yes. Okay, I'm actually 11 times more fascinated than I could have ever been convinced I would be when you started the story. Okay. Well, I almost turned the podcast off myself. Well, let me just tell you, there is there is this like crazy like cult following community aspect to it. Okay. But the movie is like I can I don't even know what the plot is to tell you the truth. Okay. To be <laughs> Is it entertaining? I was not entertained. Okay. Were because, you scared? <laughs> I mm, in a way. Would I be scared? Well, in a way. Okay. I'm sure. <laughs> Like, I've already given you more inf- I've at least given you a briefing. I feel well equipped you, at this point. You would be way more equipped than I was walking in. So here's... I would pull out the newspaper at exactly the right time. So I was in college, and our friend John, <laughs> as <laughs> usual... As usual. Is, is the culprit here. And how uh, is it that even in, in forms of art, John can be extreme? <laughs> it was, I don't think... He, to, to be fair, I think John found himself in the exact position I was once things started to get underway. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. He didn't know what was coming either, but he still was responsible. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, okay. I'll take that. <laughs> Shout out, John, if you're listening. Oh, man. So, uh, it's like Halloween and... um. You know, we're trying to like figure out what what are we gonna do on this crazy college evening? And John's like, "Hey, my girlfriend's roommate is in this like funny Halloween play or something. Do you would you uh like want to come go see that or something with us?" And I was like, "Oh, yeah, that's a, you know what that sounds fun, whatever." And like funny Halloween play is a really bad way to describe the Rocky Horror Picture <laughs> Show. First of all, but I it can see how we like got it. there. It feels like and it. So I'm thinking like. Probably like so like something scary movie esque. Okay, you know, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. like parody, just just I, like a funny play. Is all I I'm understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not that, not that, not that at all. So I get there and they're like, uh, "Have you ever seen the show before?" And I was like, "No, I have not." And not even knowing it was like a thing. Did they you know? crack like their knuckles the just word, right then and there? The words Rocky Horror Picture Show had never crossed my vocabulary. Okay. And so I am like, ugh. Uh, so they are like, and they- Can, can they, I ask you a question? Yeah. Was there any chance that you thought Rocky Balboa was going to be in it? No, no. Okay, okay. I had no idea. I really had no idea what it's about. And so they're like, oh, great. So they, then, if you haven't seen the show before at all, what they do is uh, they take some lipstick- and they draw a big V on your forehead before you go in. And the V marks you as a like virgin to the show. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. That's where we're going with this. And then you sit down. And all they've done is put a literal target on your head. For, literal. Because before the show starts, there's like all these other games that they'll do that are all like, I don't know, like hypersexual, okay. dare I say. Like they have people, like they'll have... Uh, it was like, I think one of the games they were playing was they had a bunch of people, like four people laying on the stage and they put like a cookie over top each person's like crotch area. Okay. And other people, was, the game was who could finish eating the cookie fastest of the other four people on stage. Okay. So yeah, right. Like this is the sort of thing that with a V on your head, you are like being so targeted they're, for. They're going to come call, on like, stage. So this is this is audience participation. Audience participation. I will never go to one of these. You, did you I I'm, I'm always that guy. Oh, you They oh, would pick me out of the crowd without the V. No. <laughs> they probably would. Now, for whatever John for whatever reason managed d- did not say he hadn't seen the show before. And so he's looking at me. I'm like, I don't even know what's going on. I immediately start trying to like rub it off my head like, okay, not for me. I don't know what's going on. But like and I get, like, if you know what's going on, this would be, like, a really fun thing to go do. It would be fun have, to be in the know, yeah, especially for people who didn't. it would be fun to be didn't. in the know. Yeah. It would be fun to be in the know, but it's, uh, it was not fun not being in the know and not having any idea. Like, I can't, like, even right now, you would at least be somewhat in the know. Uh, yes. You know? Yeah. Like, if you walked in completely cold, and, like, I mean, at one point... It's giving me anxiety just thinking about it. Ex- I mean, at one point, half the audience stands up and just, like, strips down to their underwear or less and starts running laps. And I'm like, what is going on? You know, like, I, it was not a good experience. Well, at least now, everybody <laughs> who listens to the pop is in the know. Now, yes. Spread the word, your, people. My favorite. <laughs> so, uh, that's what your story about Fat Man reminded me of. You're like, I gotta talk, like, what, I have no idea what I just walked into. I need to talk to people about it. Yes. Like, we were just like, 
I don't even know what's happening. Also, I'm sorry. John totally knew all of these things. I do not think he I did. Am, I am convinced that he knew exactly what was happening in his... <laughs> Maybe not. I Maybe not. I don't know. Because like the whole time we were just looking at each other like, what's going on? It is such a, it would be such a funny thing to invite someone who wasn't in the know and also pretend you weren't in the know, but oh. then watch the whole thing but unfold. Then, <laughs> they just do all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah. Where's your toast? Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> Mm. Uh, open the newspaper at the right time. Well, I liked it when you said the newspaper thing. I thought that sounded fun. Yeah. Like everybody just like whoosh, like simultaneous, like, right. I don't know. Yeah. Opening of newspapers. Right. What could be more fun than choreographed reading of the paper? Do you know that speaking of notable people from our high school from earlier in the pop, uh, another notable athlete was a guy named JJ Reddick who went to our high school. Yeah. And we I went, him. uh, while, while I think it, I was in eighth grade, but whilst, uh, JJ was a senior, and uh, they went to the state championship that year. And, you know, they announced Cave Spring players come out or whatever. And then they're announcing the other team and the Cave Spring student section, like the entire, because like, it's a really big student section because it's the state championship game. Yeah. They had all personally coordinated. They, every single person had been handed like a newspaper. Oh, and yeah. As the other team is being announced, in unison, they pull out the newspapers as if like, eh, this is boring. And like, so it was I remember watching it happen from across the stage and thought that was hilarious. I don't know how they pulled that off, but that was really funny. So good. <laughs> so funny. So good. Yeah. Yeah. No, that actually is. I'm, I'm very impressed with that. <laughs> yeah. We should, we should try to encourage more of that to happen. Yeah. Like, if you ever come to like a super Carlin brothers meetup, like I don't want to arrange it, but I want it to be the case that when we walk into the theater, everyone just opens up newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like you guys did it. Uh, I, it, see, it'd be so funny because you'd be so happy they did it when it's supposed to be like an act. It's like a, it's supposed to be mean to the other team. No, but see, they would be, now that we've talked about it, yeah. they know how happy it would make me. Right. You know, it'd be like, guys, we're already, we're already vibing. Okay. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe bring a couple extra newspapers for the people who aren't in the know and right. be sure to, be sure to clue them in. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever, whenever meetups start happening again. Exactly. God willing. In the near future. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe eventually, soon, yeah. po possibly, probably, it's good to be vague. <laughs> <laughs> That's from a video. It is from a video. It is. I said it myself. Yeah. All right. How about now? A fun fact about coyotes. Oh, yeah. Everyone's favorite segment. Oh! Everyone's, people are loving the coyote They're like, facts. it's about time. It's 48 minutes in, guys. People are, Ben the Coyote Carlin. I need more information about more. these coyotes. Yeah. I thought this one was particularly funny because there's been a, an animated series about it. Okay. Uh, the, the fun fact is that coyotes are actually more than twice as fast as roadrunners. <laughs> is that true? It is, in fact, true. Wow. Yes, coyotes max out at 43 miles per hour. Not bad. Whereas Roadrunners max out at 20 miles per hour. <laughs> Chumps. Wow. I can probably run faster than 20 miles an hour myself. Probably. Do you think I could? Maybe uh, we should measure our miles per hour one day just as a fun test. Well, I'm trying to think. How fast is like Usain Bolt running the 100 meters? I thought it was like 28, 29 miles an hour okay. is what I thought. Okay. I could be wrong, though. We'll fact check that here in a second. Also worth noting that Roadrunners generally don't, but not always, have unlimited access to to falling anvils they don't they don't no, okay. that was that was included in this uh segment from national geographic well, the about runner is rarely setting traps for wily e. coyote I mean, Wiley Coyote is often just the victim of his own traps for the Roadrunner. Is he, or is it the case that the Roadrunner is constantly dropping anvils and he's just ousting him both in speed and in ingenuity? No, the Roadrunner is just minding his own business, I'm pretty sure, at, at all times. And because of his speed, he is often invulnerable to Wiley Coyote's traps, which then inevi invariably backfire on himself. Okay. Okay. I yeah. used to actually love those cartoons. Me too. Me too. There it, it was, was like a whole, it seemed like there was like a whole genre of Looney Tunes, like Tom and Jerry esque. One character is trying to Dude's, catch the other character and it was and like, it just keeps backfiring. It, like, why is that so compelling? I don't yeah. know, but it is. Uh, it was there funny. needs to be a modern day version of this. Cause that was the other thing too. There's <laughs> no, there's no, um, uh, like voice acting. There's no, yeah. Like just the, 
Yeah, the characters didn't say anything. That was really good, Roadrunner, by the way. Thank You're you. You're a natural. Road I think I would definitely also, be the Coyote, and you would definitely be the Roadrunner. Well, that's fine for me, because the Roadrunner is basically always winning, isn't he? Well, in the cartoon. Yeah. But apparently, in, according apparently, to yeah, this according article, to life, not in real life. In real life, Roadrunners are not that tall, either. They're like tiny little birds. They are kind of tiny little burbs. Yeah. Uh, also, just for what it's worth, uh, Usain Bolt can run 27.8 MPH. Okay. Miles per okay. hour, that is. I feel like then 20 miles an hour seems doable. I think I could do 20. Yeah. Yeah. At least for a brief period of time. Right. Okay. So if you were running 20 miles an hour, then that would be a mile every three minutes, right? So that's pretty quick. That's pretty quick. Yeah. So if you were to break that down into 400 meters, that would mean, let's see here, so it's 180 seconds. What's 180 divided by four? Oh, off the top of my head? I don't know. We can do some quick calculations. 45? Here. I think it's let's 45. Find out. Okay, so a 45 second 400 meter, which is getting close. I ran a 52 second 400 meter. So yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking possible. Possible. Yeah, but not for a sustained period not of time. Not for sustained. No. Yes. That would be pretty tough. Good old mental math. Let me tell you, speaking of how fast animals is runs is is um Luke for his birthday got a bunch of just like plastic animal toys and we have been playing with them but the way in which he wants to play with them is with our google home where he'll just like set them all up and then he'll like sit on the floor and be like daddy come sit with me and i'll come like sit on the floor with me and be like let's talk about elephants and i'll be like okay and, but what he wants me to do is ask google to tell us about elephants no way <laughs> so it's, uh it's very it's been very fun trying to think of like new things to ask google about elephants however i've noticed this weird problem okay with the Google Home is that like every now and then, so like sometimes I'm like, oh, hey, Google, what does an elephant sound like or something? And it'll be like, here's an elephant. You know, it'll give you the sound. Outstanding. Which is fun. But then it like, it seems to get stuck in this mindset where then, because then you could be like, hey, Google, how fast is a camel run? And it'll be like, here's what a camel sounds like. And you're like, no, no, no. Okay, never, let me try something else. Where do gorillas live? And it'll be like, here's what gorillas sound like. And I'm like, no, no, Google, <laughs> you're not, okay. Um, What's the fastest land animal? Here's what a cheetah sounds like. And you're like, no, stop it. <laughs> you, you don't yeah, understand don't, the questions. I don't want animal sounds. It was just the one time. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is so similar to something I have going on with my Alexa, which is what I have at home, where one day my uh, same good friend Mike from yeah. the latter story, <laughs> yeah. he had his son over and we were we were working on something outside and we were trying to listen to music and Mike was like, Noah, what, what type of music do you want to listen to? And Noah was like, I don't know. And Mike was like, okay, Alexa, play mariachi music. <laughs> and so it started playing mariachi music. And this was the first and only time that has ever been asked to play mariachi music. Yeah. And yet, if I just walk into my house and I say, hey, Alexa, play some music, it will be like, hi, Ben. Here's mariachi music. And it's like, and I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like it's been months. That's fantastic. But it's still, it's like, it's like, it really stuck with my Alexa. It was like, oh yeah, this guy likes, I can tell that when we play, he left it playing for like two hours that first time. So he loved it. We've got this little like table. It's like a Fisher Price table thing with just a bunch of different like buttons and it's got, you know, shapes and numbers and letters or whatnot on it. Um, But one of the, one of the sections has just got like six numbers. And when you press them, they will play like a little jingle for like, 20 seconds okay and each each of those six buttons has two songs and you know you press it once to play the first song plus it again press the second song so luke went through and found one particular song that he likes and we'd have to go and one night he was just he'd go press it he'd go uh like you know start listening to it and then it would end and he'd come back and like press it twice so the the same song would play over and over but it was mariachi music. You're kidding me. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. And he was like, he'd like get it restarted. Then he'd get up and he'd go like dance for like 20 seconds to the music and then come back. And then like, so eventually I just pulled up like, you know, an hour of mariachi music on my phone and we were just playing it. And he would look and be like, and it was so weird because, you know, you would think of Mary. There's always that like one, you know, yeah, song yeah, yeah. you think of, yep. but it's like, 
It's very. There's a lot of different. Of course, no, yeah, yeah there, there is. I and I, I did the same thing. I went to the thing everybody would, would know. But yeah, no, it, it is, it is. Kind of, sometimes I'm actually like, okay, this is, this is pretty good. This is pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. I didn't so, know this one. So that was funny. So yeah, I, I found some like you know hour long like playlist on YouTube, or just like a video of like an hour of mariachi music. And after the first, you know, we start the first song, and Luke's listening to it, and he's like loving it, and it gets to the end of the first two minutes and thirty seconds, and it starts playing the second. He's like, I don't like this one. I don't like this one i'm like how could you even tell it changed <laughs> You're like, no go back, go back. He, he was tuned in man he i know was feeling he was it. tuned in i was like oh there you go maybe. do you think that maybe you and i unbeknownst to ourselves have been like manifesting mariachi music i don't know i don't know you've got skeletons you know hanging in your Good yard it's kind of like a dia de los mortos yeah theme going on to it uh i'll tell you what it was very interesting when the movie Coco was coming out in theaters because that movie. you and I would spend on occasion a day or two just like deep diving Mexican artwork. Yes. Because we were trying to like think, find connections in the movie or like make predictions or theories or stuff about it. And the movie is so deeply rooted in Mexican culture and artwork and music. And it was like so fun learning about it. Like I just... I just like really like lots of Mexican artwork <laughs> now. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really, it's honestly, it was very interesting too, I think for me, because I took four years of Spanish in high school. So like yeah. a lot of the stuff that we were uncovering were things that like we would have been taught in those Spanish classes as like part of like the, the culture element of the class. Like you're yeah. learning the language, like maybe first and foremost, but also along the way right. you talk about like the different holidays and you talk about the different traditions and yeah. customs of, of different Spanish speaking cultures. And um, I think that I always struggled with it in high school during those periods of time, because it, it like it didn't ring true to me in a way that, once Coco was placed before me, it did make me like then see it in like a whole new light. Like yeah. I was like very like invigorated by it. And it was so mm. fun to like apply all that knowledge, That's which cool. I think really like the, the point of that story, the moral of the story, I guess, from my perspective is that like, I think there are so many different topics that you can be taught that if that like the, the school is probably not always going to teach it to you in the way that is most interesting to you. Yeah. Because of course, you know, it would be like impossible to cater to the specific interest of every single individual. But I think that probably just about any topic can be interesting to some somebody given the right lens oh for like, sure the right reason to look at it mm -hmm. in a speculative way or to like understand it or to like really like digest and take in that information yeah and i think that is interesting yeah well it, yeah I, I agree and i think the greatest examples are like when i think about places i want to visit two places that often crop up are one mexico as i mentioned and then two like norway sure uh is like really high on my list uh, and whenever because I, of frozen, because of frozen, exactly yeah. though. But whenever I bring up like, you know, Beth would be like, Oh, I want you know, I want to go travel to Europe. So damn, I was like, yeah, we should go to like Norway. And she'd be like, I'm thinking more like Italy or Spain or Paris, like, you know, very more conventional places you would want to go. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. I'm like, no, I want to go to Norway. <laughs> I, I, hear I, you, I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you want Eiffel Tower, but like yeah. we could see a fjord. <laughs> yeah. But think about the think of the views, the fjords, the Huga. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's go up there. But I think that's probably part of that is because we've made so many frozen videos that we've gotten like very deep. We have into the we, culture we, ra rather deep in the Scandinavian culture, which is so much fun as well. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting. We Plus, Easton Pavia Day. <laughs> Easton Pavia Day, right exactly. around the corner, by the way. Right February around 14th. the corner. Get I'm, those French fries ready, people. I know. I'm getting excited. I'm getting. I'm getting excited for for February Friendsgiving. Yeah. But what was going? Oh, I could go and split wood. I am like, I don't know that I've ever been more. I've talked about this before, like yeah. how like my happy place is sort of like going to like this mentality where I'm just like splitting wood. Right. And I feel like as, as time goes on, it remains relatively true. Like, OK, I have this issue with my personality where it is constantly in flux. And I feel like you are so good at liking things consistently mm -hmm. like you will like something or you will like invest into a hobby and then like spend time and energy and resources on that hobby and like for a very long time like unwaveringly <laughs> beth was just telling me this exact thing this weekend really <laughs> well, she, it was so funny because i was like she was going up to get ready for a run or something and the kids weren't really ready so 
I like made myself like uh, like a breakfast sandwich and I sat down and I was just like flipping onto YouTube to see like, you know, has anyone uploaded anything? And one of the uh, silly things that I really like to enjoy is uh, I think have, we might have talked about it some of the pop is uh, Yeller's Marble Runs. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yep. you know, it's, it's uh, season two of Marbula One Racing. Oh, great. Right Marbula now. One. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I it's was the just, best name I've ever heard. Exactly. <laughs> it is such a good name. It is so such a good name. Um, and so I was like, oh, there's a new, there's a new, like race five is up. Excellent. So like she got up for like two minutes. And in that time I had like assembled a breakfast sandwich, sat down and turned on Marble Racing. And she came out and she's like, man, you're just so good at like knowing what you want to do and just doing it. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. It's so frustrating. I was like. Ben has said that exact sentence to me so many times. Yes. And that made her very happy. She always thinks it's funny when you and her like have converged on the same personality trait of oh mine. My, I think for one, <laughs> I think it is very, I, I think it's very telling mm -hmm. because I think there are lots of moments that I think that you and Alice are very similar mm -hmm. and you've, you've said the same thing before Yeah, where you think that there are moments where like uh, Beth and I are very similar and I feel like there must be something to that. Like the reason that I get along with Alice and you so well is probably for the same reason that you get yeah. along with me and Beth so well. Yeah, probably. I think that that must be the way that those pieces of the puzzle fit together. <laughs> I th well, I, I, know, I don't know if we've talked about the Enneagram. I believe we have some. Yeah. yeah. Well, so this is such a weird thing with the Enneagram is that if you're unfamiliar with it, it's just like a personality test and you can be a one or two or three or four or five or six, seven, eight or nine. Right. Or whatever. And it's it's been a weird personality test to experience with other people because everyone I know is either a two or a three. And it's like, like to me, I'm like, what is the, this, this feels like a failure of a test because everyone's getting the same two numbers. Right. And it's like, that's absolutely just not true. It's just, that's the people that I've like surrounded myself with. And I don't feel like it's accidental. Right. I feel like all these people are like, like, you are a filter for twos and threes. Right. Basically. basically yeah. yeah. The like life funnels twos and threes to me. So like when I, I think we, um, you know, our, our editor, Scott took the test and he, he was, came back and was a six. And I was like, whoa, wait, what really? You're not a two or what do you mean? <laughs> I was like, that, that's, that's no, hilarious. No, that doesn't happen. That doesn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, try again. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're supposed to be a two or three. <laughs> it be a two or three. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway. But. No, it's, it's very true. Yeah. Uh, the Enneagram is very interesting. It's like, I mean, on the one hand it is, is a self-assessment, but on the other, I do think that it's one of those things that is, is very revealing as you start to like read about some of the things. And I like self-reflection. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that like the number one thing that I spend my time doing is self-reflecting and like mm -hmm. reliving conversations and moments and like, you know, dissecting them. Yeah. I don't know. I think that I think it's a really I would highly recommend it to people. I think it costs twelve dollars to take the test, but oh, I think yeah. it's twelve dollars well spent. I agree. But so you were talking about splitting wood. Yes, I was talking about splitting wood for some reason. Well, then you veered into like me d finding hobbies and sticking with them. Oh, yeah. OK, so let's talk about that, though, because it's true. OK, like this is the thing about you, though. Like there have been times where I've seen and I've talked before about like your bedroom at home. Uh, when we were kids and how you would just like you would put in friends DVDs and you would just like sit in your bed watching friends like like marathons like binging them before it was a thing. Right. And I would like walk in and be like, I love this. Like I need to, to recreate this. And then like <laughs> I remember at your your old house, you've, you've just recently moved in the past couple of years. You had your office, which was like this addition and you would like walk in and like everything like you had like a set of like shelves against the wall that like had like neat little decorations and knickknacks on it. And the desk was like clean and you would like use it for streaming and like everything was very functional and like also had like that very like well-worn vibe about it or something mm -hmm. like like Katniss's jacket. It would be like an example of this from the Hunger Games. Yeah. It's like the supple leather, you know, yeah. it's like it's like Her dad's it's like, old hunting jacket. Exactly. It's like yeah. very utilitarian, but it's also like very quality. It's very broken in. It's mm -hmm. like it's just right. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of times I'll, I will see you doing these things and I'll be like, OK, well, I'll get like a desk in a gaming computer and I'll like set up the whole thing and then I'll become a gamer. Right. Right. Like that's I'll just buy all the stuff that I need to do and then I'll I'll do it. 
and I'll enjoy it and I'll have like a way to spend my free time. Yeah. And it does not work that way. <laughs> and it's like, I have a great gaming computer, but my desk is in disarray. It's like the room that all the random boxes and stuff get dropped in. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not a very fun space to be in. I yeah. forgot to buy a rug. So like yeah. it feels like it's very echoey in there. Right. Everything is just wrong about it. And I don't know how to make everything right about it. But the one thing that I know is that for years and years, I've daydreamed about splitting wood. But you haven't done it. But I haven't done it. It's almost like, but maybe that's like part of it. Like maybe it just needs to remain a daydream. Like you're afraid if you like order a pallet of wood and go out and buy a nice axe and split wood for half an hour, you're going to be like, you, you think I'm just going to like it. I'll have a way to spend my free time, but then you won't. And you'll just have an unchopped stack of wood. Yeah. Yeah. That is the concern. Mm. And I think that you'll, it, you'll lose this like romantic, like daydream. That's the thing. Yeah. And I, I do this with, a, with, a, I think a lot of, a lot of things and you, I mean, probably most of the things that you hear me constantly nagging you like, Hey, like I really want to like, I really want to do this business. I really want to try this idea. It's almost always, or even like a vlog for that matter. It's all of these ideas are things where it's almost like, I don't know whether or not once I actually step into them, that I can trust myself enough to know that I'm going to consistently want to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I I actually found, I think it was a TikTok I was watching the other day and it was like the, um, the curve of like, of, of change or something. Yeah. Uh, which is like the very process of like adapting to like a new skill. And you kind of like your enthusiasm starts like on the, on like this really like high point where you're like, yeah, I want to do this thing. And then immediately what you find out is everything you didn't know about how hard it is to actually do that thing. Yeah. And most people die right there. Like that's where their enthusiasm stops and they never like persevere through that moment to the, to like the stage moving towards like, enrichment or something like some, right. some version of like fulfillment coming from that mm. hobby. Like, like <clears throat> the realization, like I used to not be able to do this, but then I worked really hard and I got better at it. And then, then I could do it. And that encourages me to continuously push and persevere past the sticking points in the future mm-hmm. because I've already done it with the big thing. Right. And so I, what I find myself constantly stuck with is whether or not I need to Am I, am I constantly getting stuck in that valley? And I'm just like, well, well, yeah, it sounds like you, you're standing at the top of the valley and there's like a fog down there and you can't see it. Right. Like that's covering all the hard parts. Exactly. Yeah. Well, okay. It's interesting. This is an interesting analogy because it, from my, from like having been your brother and been on the receiving end on so many of your ideas. Yeah. It has often felt like. Why can't Ben see through the fog? <laughs> right. Right. And maybe this is like the disconnect because like to me, like I'm always extremely aware like, there's no fog. Oh, like you're looking straight at I'm the looking problems. straight at it. Yeah. And like so like I think that's probably why it's easy for me to like stick with something because I'm like I was already aware normally of like what everything was going to entail. It's like, oh, yeah, like I want to I want to get into streaming. That is going to involve like getting a nice computer. It's going to involve fiddling around in X split and being frustrated. It's going to involve not knowing how to do the microphones. It's going to involve lots of stupid glitches. I'm not going to be able to fix on the fly and like all all these things. Yes. Like all of those, all of those feel present to me from the onset from the onset. We'll see. And that's, I don't know though, because if I were to look at a lot of the things that I've wanted to do, like I think very frequently I do spend an enormous amount of my time trying to figure out like what the I do I feel like I think about what those problems are going to be and it's not maybe the lack of awareness that there will be problems it's it, it's like there are certain ones I can predict and it's fun for me to start pre-solving them mm-hmm. and then there are other problems that I can't predict and those are the ones that end up getting super sticky and are are like the problem like I don't know they're, they're the things that hold me up right from being able to push forward with it and I think a lot of times it depends like I think I always look at the Super Carlin Brothers YouTube project mm-hmm. and I almost think that you had this massive store of enthusiasm that was so ridiculously essential to us making it through our first year of YouTube sure because like you wanted to do it so bad yeah and it was kind of like for me I think that if if I didn't follow through, it was never worth it to me to disappoint 
that enthusiasm mm-hmm. that was there. And it was like, and I knew that. And I was like, I, I think that like it helped me keep going when I didn't want to, which was, I would say 90% of the time because it was like, I just like, I just, it didn't come naturally to me. Right. And I was like, I don't, like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, I don't feel like I'm, I, I don't feel like I'm getting it in the meantime. I feel like you super are. But so I think a lot of times I come to you with ideas specifically because I almost just assume that if I can get you on board with any of these things with the same kind of enthusiasm, then I can like rely on, on that on that (laughs) and like that's like okay it's like okay if i can if i can like inject a dream into him not like in a manipulative way but like if it just happens to be the case Mm -hmm. so what i'm doing is i'm like fishing but i'm changing the lure literally every single time right you know it's like there wasn't any fish there it's like will this one work nope that one didn't work will Mm. this one work no, that one didn't work. I see. And so I just keep casting lines over and over and over again until finally I'll say something that you're going to be like, yes, I've always wanted to do that. And then I'm like, yes, now I get to tie into his enthusiasm bank and I'll be good. Yeah. Well, that's how we have the pop, right? <laughs> sort of. Yeah. 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 Basically. We got here. Here we are. We're doing wow. it. Wow. Episode f- 54. Four. Yeah. Man. I think so. And we're over a year in. I know. How about that? <clears throat> well, weirdly, we are not we're over we're over 52 we're episodes over but 52 episodes which come out weekly however we had one a zero episode which i guess wouldn't even count but then we had three episodes come out on christmas day yep. last year yep so people would have a library to listen to out of the gate right okay so christmas day which is now as of the time of this video releasing will be one week from today how unbelievable is that I know, I know. So we're close. We are close. But we've made it more than a year's worth of episodes. Yes, we've made it for more than a year's worth of episodes. Almost a full year. Well, we would have started recording by this time last year, right? Yes, we would have. Yeah, Yeah. because we were were recording ahead of time. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I mean, I think that that's... uh, It's been a good year. I'm glad we did it. Me too. It's been super fun. So we're going to continue? Oh yeah, for sure we're going to continue. Everybody's on the edge of their seat. No, I mean, we got... We got plans. There's even, I can tell you that the, uh, I, d- I don't know if we firmed up a date, but I we've brought up several times doing like a Christmas special with Mike and John, the other GMA members here on the pop. We're trying our best with it. We're I know. trying our best. We're really trying. And they're, they, they see, they say yes, they want to do it, but it's uh it's a matter of scheduling it because people's very busy during the holidays. Yes, they but, are. You know, yeah. we'll see. We're, we're trying to make it happen very badly. For you guys. For you guys. I think it'd be really fun. <laughs> I think it would be the most fun. I think yeah. it would be the most fun. It would be so exciting to get to to get the those voices out there, you know. <laughs> yes. It, it's just gonna be us descending into total anarchy. It's gonna be total giggles. It's, it's gonna, gonna be great. Be, it's gonna yeah. be great. Well, guys, anyway, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the pop. As always, if you have any uh feedback or thoughts that you want to send our way, you can do that by shooting us an email at popcornculturepod at gmail.com. If you would like to support us on Patreon, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash popcornculture, or else we also have the Reddit page, uh, which is totally growing and happening and lots of really cool yeah, it is. fun input uh that actually does tend to make it into the pop. I would recommend going and checking out the reddit as well just search uh popcorn culture yes but otherwise until next week pop pop <laughs>